Bruno. Okay, so Vlad, welcome, and Bruno, welcome to uh, Sound Bites on the Sofa. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Uh, Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, Bruno. And you're just going to settle down. All right, so today um, you're the expert on um, data analytics and big data. Um, so I thought it would be useful to start off with um, you giving us uh, a definition or an explanation mm -hmm. as to how you see, um, you know, what, that, what, what does that mean for yeah. medium-sized business, big business, yeah. um, and how we can help in that, in that process. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, again, happy to be here. Um, you know, some advice on the sofa you've got done very amazing job. Um, in terms of yeah, data analytics, I guess we can start just explaining what really it means, you know, what data is, what big data is, and what analytics is. Yeah. So they're all sort of connected, but at the same time they're different. So for example, if we say about big data, we are actually talking about, you know, I'm um, talking about unstructured, semi-structured, structured data, and it's like massive, massive amounts of data. That's why here we're more talking about the big organizations that have a lot of customers and you know a lot of customer data, a lot of, a lot of their behavior, and you know they have um, they might have some contact center um, information where there are a lot of customer calls, customer emails, and all these kind of things. And it all comes down to you know you have all these massive sources of information and you don't really know what to do with that. That's basically your big data, and you require a lot of resources and a lot of technology to kind of sort of you know sort it, yep. then store it, and then actually use it. And the problem here, especially with the big data, is the usage. I mean, you can apply some of the technologies, um, you know, some of the software. You can get resources, but how do you actually use this data? And this is the problem. And I think that's where, you know, our that's where we can come on board and say, okay, so we identified all your sources of information. We can bring it all together. But the real value of it is how do you use it? How do you make? the actual use of the data, how do you understand the patterns, how do you, you know, define the approach of storing the data, how do you um, see what sort of trends are there, how do you build dashboards, the KPIs, OKRs, all these little things. And a lot of companies... Because that's, that's good, uh, because I mean certainly from a finance person, uh, person's perspective, yeah. and that's where I come from, um, you know, we uh, generally work at that higher level uh, mm -hmm. in terms of profit and loss and balance sheets and yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, sure, we want to dig into the detail, but we don't always have the tools and, and the capability, yeah. um, either ourselves or or within the organization to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, the devil's in the detail. Mm -hmm. and, and quite often you find out um, within a business what's going right and what's not going right. Yeah. Um, and you know our philosophy, it's around commercial intelligence and that is around making decisions based on fact yeah. as opposed to gut. Yeah. That, yeah that's uh, where, I think that's where um, there's a nice synergy between mm -hmm. what we do in terms of reporting and analysing a business and what you bring, which yeah. is the tools and the capability to be able to go down to that next level. Yeah. And it's very important to know as well, I agree with you, you know, um, you, you, you want to become like a data-driven organization, you want to base your decisions on facts. And a lot of companies still, you know, especially the small, uh, smaller companies uh, and people that have been there for 20 years, they say, like, I actually know the business and my gut feel tells me that we need to do that. But instead of, you know, just basing your on your feelings and what you know your experience you can actually dig a little bit deeper and you can look at customer behavior it's not just about okay we sold this you know this number of products during this period and that's it you can actually try and look what are the trends in the market and it might not be even your data your data can definitely support but you can do a little bit you can go a little bit outside and see okay what are the trends in the market and you know what are the new like if you are, for example, a manufacturing clothes store and you, you're manufacturing a specific, um, you know, not even like following the fashion or anything, you're manufacturing a specific type of clothes, 
but then you need to understand the generations are changing and that's that's where you can actually start and utilizing the data you can buy you know there are so many um, other different data sources that are available that you can bring in but if you don't have this if you don't have this expertise that's where you kind of you know, fall us back a little bit. That's, that's that. where we can assess and say, hey, look, I think we, we are seeing that the trends, your sale trend is started to decline. Why is that? What is the reason? Then you can say, well, maybe, you know, our sales team is not doing that great. Mm -hmm. But we can say, well, maybe your sales team is still the same and maybe they're not doing that great, but the underlying reason for that is actually the changing of the market. The market changes, you know, there are new trends, there are new fashion, there is new style of clothes that you need to start producing, otherwise you're gonna fall behind. Mm -hmm. I think the other side of it is, um, the other benefit of this big data, certainly from my perspective, is, I think you touched on it, um, it's about setting standards, or at least yeah. measuring against the standard. Yeah. Um, and that's what a lot of businesses don't or can't do, yeah. not accurately. And what you don't want is you don't want to be creating a system that forces people to say, oh, I've done 15 things, 15 of these things today. You want the system to drive what people have done or not done mm -hmm. and, and how quickly they've done it and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, I've got businesses that actually want to, to do that. They want to be able to measure performance, mm -hmm. um, internal performance in different areas of the business. Um, might be how quickly they put orders into the system yeah. um, through to how quickly those orders are actually converted into invoices. Yeah. You know, simple things like that um, is a forte of uh, the types of solutions that you um, yeah, can, can exactly. Use. So we, we can build all these dashboards, right? Because this data exists, but because people don't really know how to use it, mm. they all rely um, you know, on people that they are doing a very good job. But sometimes you can see that, you know, again, coming back to the trend sales of decline in trend sales. Why this is happening? You start to dig deeper a little bit in terms of, you know, around your operations. So, you know, how is your machinery operating? Maybe you know you need some sort of maintenance. Have you done anything around you know predictive analytics? And this this applies um, you know again when we talk about analytics, there are different type of analytics, and we touched on um, sort of descriptive analytics where we just see the facts and we describe them, and we can put them into OKRs, KPIs. We can put them into dashboards, but then there is another type of predictive analytics. And then the predictive analytics actually can help you with, um, you know, forecasting. So you, t you take all the trends, you take customer behavior, you take your machinery and how it operates, and that's your forecast. And then we have, you know, some, you know, if we talk about banks, for example, they use um, predictive analytics for fraud detection, yep. how this is open up. If we talk about manufacturing and all these big machineries, mm -hmm. we talk about preventive analytics. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Okay, so we know all the parameters of this, of this machine, and we know how it operates, and then we forecast it going forward over the next three months. And then we monitor um, against the forecast, and if we see a decline, we say, okay, this is a signal, this is an alert, we need to do something about it, we need to look at this machine. And then you can identify like a minor defect, which will cost you a few thousand dollars instead of not identifying it in three months down the line, the machine is gone and it costs you five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And this is a massive benefit that you can't really quantify because it's like it's somewhere in the future and you know it might happen. Mm. But, but if you've got those this, triggers in place exactly. and you know how to read them, yeah, then it's hugely useful yeah. for for management. Yeah. yeah, for management. And yeah, and again, it it is always a hard sell to say, you know, we can actually build this and it doesn't take a lot of time. You get all these parameters, you look at the machine, you forecast it going forward and you, then you monitor with a simple, very, very simple dashboard. And one actually good example that um, one of these predictive um, analytics that we used was by a big energy company in New Zealand. Um, it's sort of public, you know, they, 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 they publish all these um, things um, for, for people to see. So they have this big um, geothermal plants, right, that cost millions and millions of dollars. So what they did, they took um, all the parameters of their plant and then put it into a model 
So then they predict over the next three months, as I mentioned, how it's going to behave. So they were actually able, within the first months, they were able to identify uh, a minor defect, which, which saved them millions of dollars. Wow. And they just paid it off. The whole development of this predictive analytics paid it off in single alert. Wow. And you know, like, yeah, you, cause you, you never really, you never really think about these things, mm. uh, but for manufacturing, this is very important. Yes, absolutely. And again, this is, comes from data. Yeah. And you have it, companies have it, yeah. but they don't have an idea how to utilize it. No. Um, and quite often they don't have the skill set in, in house to and be able to set, even yeah. think about how to grab that data, yeah. organize that data, clean it, and, and then present it in a way that's meaningful to um, a viewing audience. Yeah. Audience. yeah.